It's been nearly a year since I posted my everyday makeup routine, so let's do an updated one. First up we have the NARS Pure Radiance Tinted Moisturiser in the shade Techno. It has really good coverage for a tinted moisturiser. I would say it's light but buildable to medium, and I tend to apply a fair amount for that bit of extra coverage. And dotting it on first makes the distribution a bit more even when it comes to blending it out. I'm using a damp beauty blender here. I like really pushing the product into my skin for a nice seamless finish. I love how well this tinted moisturiser blends out and I don't find that it oxidises during the day either. On a day-to-day -day basis, I just want my skin to look even and healthy. I lean slightly cool, but my undertone is actually quite neutral and this shade is one of very few that is almost a perfect match. Little tip for you, if you have some darkness under and around your eyes like I do, taking your base makeup into the inner corners can really open up your eyes and add some nice brightness. As you can see, I like to blend in sections, first doing my cheeks and under eyes, then my mouth area, and then finally my forehead. By the way, I film in natural light, just sitting in front of a window, so no studio lights etc that could skew the colouring of these products. I have a few little spots around my mouth and nose area, so I'm going to use the NARS Soft Matte Pot Concealer in the shade Light One Chantilly. Yellow is so good for counteracting redness, and I like to use this tiny Spectrum A09 brush just to carefully paint the concealer onto the areas I want to colour correct. Then I'll blend the concealer out with my finger while trying not to distribute it too far outside the areas of redness. I'll usually go back and forth a few times before I'm happy with the level of coverage. It's quite difficult to show the texture of this concealer, but it's very pigmented and matte without feeling dry or looking cakey. I always use a cool toned concealer for my under eye area as I find that pink counteracts the bluey purpley shade of my dark circles best. This is the Benefit Boying Bright On Concealer in the shade Lychee. I have a few I go between but I absolutely love this one. The consistency is very thin which I personally think is perfect for the under eye area. Products that are too thick crease very easily on me. Once I've patted in the concealer, I use a different finger to go over the outer edges and collect any unnecessary product that might crease throughout the day. I always blend upwards to my lower lash line rather than applying the product directly to that area as I just end up with too much build up otherwise. I always think having as little product as possible around the eye area looks best, especially in person. Now for blusher, I'm nearly out of my Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pink Pop, but I do have a backup I'll be opening soon. I know everyone says this, but I wish these weren't quite so messy. I blend it out with the same beauty blender I used earlier and use the remaining tinted moisturiser around the edges of my blusher to make everything look nice and seamless. I tend to apply it quite high on my cheekbone, but I don't like to go too high onto my temple. Then for a reasonably new addition, I go over the blush wand with this Armani Beauty Luminous Silk Glow Blush in the shade 52. It looks a little bit terrifying in the pot, but it's actually so beautiful. I apply a tiny bit really lightly to the top of my cheekbones using a Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush. I also dust a little bit onto the bridge of my nose. I think it just adds that little bit of extra dimension to my cheeks. I usually powder before doing my brows, but for some reason I felt like doing them first today. This is the Kosas Brow Pop Jewel Action Defining Pencil in the shade Taupe. First I brush up my brows with the spoolie end of the pencil, and then I fill them in with the pencil end. I don't like my brows to look too done, so I'll generally just follow their natural shape. Like many people, my brows are quite uneven, but I don't bother trying to even them out. This one is a lot more arched than the other, but c'est la vie. Once I've filled in any gaps, I brush through them again to blend out the product, and then onto brow gel. This is the Kosas Air Brow in Clear. It dries to a kind of soft wax, so keeps the hairs in place without making them look too unnatural. I love how small the applicator is as well, because I don't like the feeling of getting brow gel onto my skin. Now that my brows are nicely set, it's time to powder. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Pressed Powder in Translucent. I like to be quite specific with my powder placement, so I use a clean Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush to push it into the skin. I don't set my under eyes on a day-to-day -day basis because I find it makes them look dry after a couple of hours. I generally just focus the powder on my T-zone. If I know photos are going to be taken though, I always set my under eyes because otherwise they look too glowy compared to the rest of my makeup. So that would be safe for an event, but definitely not most of the time. And our base is done. I love leaving the kind of orbital area dewy because it gives such good dimension, I think. My T-zone gets oily throughout the day, so even though I wasn't looking particularly shiny, I like to set and mattify my makeup in the morning. 
These Kevin Aquan eyelash curlers are so good. Look how much longer my lashes look after using them. I've been going between two different mascaras lately. One is the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl Mascara and the other is Huda Beauty's One Coat Wow. I felt like doing a dramatic lash this morning so decided to go with the Huda Beauty one. This was released quite recently and I love it. It's so volumising and lengthening. First you deposit the product using the flat side of the wand and then comb through your lashes with the convex side. I should have used the mirror instead of just my tiny viewfinder because this application did not do the mascara justice. They do still look very long and black though so I'm happy. I find that blinking onto the convex side of the brush helps to comb them through and separate the lashes. It has quite a dry formula which I love because it sets quickly before my lashes have a chance to drop from the curling beforehand. Lips are always my favourite part of my makeup routine and I do tend to switch up the products I use but at the moment I adore the black Givenchy Balm in the shade 10. The packaging is so luxurious and beautiful and the logoed bullet was stunning when the balm was new. It has a soft rose flavour which I adore and this shade of pink goes perfectly with the rest of my makeup. I often take this balm with me to work because I can just easily reapply at my desk, no mirror necessary. You can also build the pigment up by the way to quite a deep berry. And here is my everyday makeup. It takes me maybe 15 minutes. I just love how fresh and simple it is. Please let me know in the comments if there are any particular makeup looks or trends you'd like me to try. I've been a bit more regular with YouTube and I want to try and keep up the momentum. Goodbye.